I hear no uh, bad noises from the compressor. Once again, I have my liquid vaporizer here, uh, and that is protecting the system to make sure that we don't have any liquid sludging of the compressor. Now, if I was just to let this sit for a little bit, what's going to happen here is this temperature will go down, all right? And this temperature you see has risen, all right? So we're at about 105 degrees saturated temperature, and we are at 95 degrees. But we're going to hit a certain point where all of a sudden this temperature is going to start skyrocketing down, okay? So we're going to, we're going to see when that is. All right, we're at 3.6 ounces weighed in so far. And there's different types of temp probes that you can use. There's ones that clamp on. There's the long rod ones, so I don't like to use those because uh, I like to have the smallest sensing bowl possible so that it takes an accurate reading. Uh, and then I usually just electrical tape that on, but there's clamp ones, there's all kinds of them. But those clamps, you know, are susceptible to a little more error than that little tiny thermocouple on the end of these things. All right, you want to make sure that this uh, is out, in, out of the shade, all right, or you can put a little piece of Armaflex over top of it, some insulation, just so you're reading the exact correct temperature of that liquid line. All right. Now our liquid vaporizer is going to feel a little bit cold, and that's due to uh, liquid pressure hitting a metering device, all right, and turning into a vapor. It's flashing. Anytime that happens, it gets cold on here, and that's the same thing that happens inside the evaporator coil of the uh, indoor unit. All right, we got 4.3 ounces in so far. We're going to keep adding. A kind of a rig of a setup here just to show you. All right, this smaller liquid vaporizer is not going to work as effectively as this, but it will work. Any type, anytime you have like a little pinhole like that, it's a restriction. It's a metering device, and that helps with flashing uh, the refrigerant. We are at 5.4 ounces so far, and we are at 65 psi on the low side, just to kind of give you a reference point here. If you didn't have a liquid vaporizer and you were just doing it with liquid, you know, you might hear a little bit of, of noise from that compressor. It's going to go faster, but this is a safer way to do it. All right, you have to have a scale for your R22 just to say, just so you know how much to end up charging the homeowner. Also, for your own knowledge, you know, uh, if you realize that the head pressure rises from, from one point to another point and you know that that's half a pound or one pound, you know, then you know uh, what to expect the next time, or you know at least what the leak rate of, of this particular unit is. All right. All right, we're at about 7.1 ounce so far. We should be getting pretty close here, uh, but once again, it does take a little bit of time. If I had more time, I would walk away. I would uh, start filling out my service ticket, writing down model numbers, writing down the, the problem and such and such. Um, I would have already changed the filter. I would have already, before I even checking the charge, I would have checked the filter. I would have made sure that I had good airflow out of all the registers. Um, you know, make sure there's no crazy air leaks. You know, just before I would even run the unit. Just so you know, I like to have this off, okay? I like to have it down but I like to turn the indoor unit on, all right? If I turn the indoor unit on, I get that running, I, I get past my five minute on off delay for the thermostat, all right? 
um, or I'm sorry, the five minute on delay. I'll get past that and then I can go walk outside and then when I'm ready, once the indoor unit is running, I can flip this switch and I can hear the compressor. So I can hear if there's any weird noises coming from it or anything like that, all right? Which is a good thing. I like to be able to be out there and hear. Maybe the compressor doesn't start up right away. If that's the case, they might start thinking about uh, a hard start kit or, or something, or at least checking uh, the very first thing you might do is check that capacitor inside here. Maybe the capacitor doesn't have the, the correct MFD rating. So right now our saturated temperature on our liquid line is right around 107, 108. So we're at 11 degrees of subcooling right now. 11 to 12 degrees of subcooling. So we have now started to increase our subcooling, which is a good thing. Add a little bit more. I'm going to turn this off. I hear the battery is about to shut itself off. Every once in a while, you're going to need to do that with this type of unit. Uh, it's trying to save its battery. So it'll shut off when it thinks it's not in use. Right now, we're at 108 uh, degrees saturated on the liquid line, and we are at 95.6. Uh, so we have 12 degrees of subcoin. Right. And we're looking for 15 or 16. Gonna keep adding. If you do this too fast, you're gonna overcharge the unit. I'll tell you that right now. So, as I keep saying, I would have let this run for a little bit because what will happen is the temperature usually it drops when you add refrigerant, then it increases, then it finally drops down to its final position. And if you don't give it a chance to do all that, then you might end up overcharging the system. You might go and work on something else, and then all of a sudden you come back and you're, and you're trying to get 15 degrees, and all of a sudden it reads 22 degrees at some point. And that's because you did it too fast. I am doing it fast here just so that you can see it. But I would give it a little bit more time. All right, so far we've added 10 ounces, 10.4 ounces. And we got 95, 95 degrees. We're just about there. All right, now we got 94 degrees. We got 109 saturated R22 temperature, and we have 94 degrees. So that's about 15 degrees of subcooling. I'm gonna add a little bit more, and then we're gonna wait. I think because we're we're basically just about there. Should have about 15 degrees of subcooling, and we're just about there. 109 saturated R22 temperature. Remember the saturated temperature that this hose is trying to read is trying to read right in the middle of this condensing unit. All right, once it turns into a complete liquid, the temperature difference between here and here that is the subcooling, the, the temperature decrease in liquid form. And that is subcooling. 109 degrees saturated temperature, 93, 93.5. I'd say we're there. All right, 109 minus 93. That's 16 degrees of subcooling, and that's how much I said I wanted to get. I said I wanted to get uh, one degree higher than what it actually was calling for. It calls for 15, I like to get then to 16. If it's calling for 10, I like to get it. 11 just because somebody might attach their gauge set later and it's going to pull more refrigerant out so once again just give it a little time and you'll have it all right that's that hope you enjoyed yourself and see you next time at ac service tech channel